Welcome along. Now, we do start with the news that British pensioner David Hunter has now been released from prison after serving 19 months for causing the death of his terminally ill wife. A very emotive case, this. Lots of strong opinions on either side of it. Now, he admitted suffocating Janice at their retirement home in Cyprus back in December 2021. She was suffering from blood cancer, and David told the court that she had begged him to help end her life. He was convicted of manslaughter. Now he is out. Well, I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined by Michael Polak, who is the director of Justice Abroad and is David Hunter's lawyer. Thank you very much, Michael. Firstly, how is he? He's ecstatic to be out of, uh, out of prison. He's been in there uh, for, for, for 19 months, as you said. For someone of that age to spend time in prison is very difficult. He was in a cell with 11 other men uh, there. He was treated with respect by the prison, prison guards and other inmates, of course. But it's a very difficult place to be as someone of that age. So he's very happy to be released today. Assuming that there's no chance of him facing some kind of criminal case back here in the UK, is there? Uh, Patrick, I've, I, I've lost you there. I can't quite oh, hear what you're is saying. There, is there any chance of him facing a criminal case back here in the UK? Oh, OK. All right. I think we might be struggling a little bit with I'm Michael. Sorry, I, I'm it's OK, Michael, don't worry. We will go back to you. So, look, get your emails coming in on this. A deeply, deeply emotive case. And I think everyone can put themselves, or at least try to anyway, into the position that, that David found himself in. His wife, Janice, had been suffering from blood cancer for a long time. Now, what David was saying was, look, she was begging me to end her life. She had no quality of life. She was in pain. She just didn't want to live like this anymore. And as anyone who desperately loves somebody and somebody that you've been with for a huge period of time, you wouldn't want to see them like that, would you? But of course, well, the law is involved. I believe we might have Michael back. Thank you very much, Michael. Look, I'll just crack on with this. And is there any chance of David facing any criminal prosecution here in Britain? No, this is all over for him. He, he faced a charge of premeditated murder. He was found not guilty of that two weeks ago. And the importance of that is if he was found guilty of premeditated murder, he would have spent the rest of his life in prison here in Cyprus. So we were very pleased when that was off the table. In regards to the manslaughter that he was willing to plead to all along, uh, he was given this sentence of two years, which allowed him to walk free from court today. So it couldn't have gone better for him uh, today, and he's very pleased, and we're very pleased with the result of the hearing. It's obviously a very an emotional uh, matter to be dealing with, uh, but we think the right decision has been made. And I'm assuming that David was able to demonstrate that his wife did indeed want to die. Yes, yeah, so the court, as well as uh, finding him not guilty of the premeditated murder, they, gave, they found in his favour in regards to all the facts that we put forward uh, that she wanted to end her life, she was in a lot of pain, and he acted out of love for her. They'd been together for over 50 years, and witnesses described just how loving that relationship was. It was like uh, the perfect relationship. Janice's hairdresser came to court and said that everyone in the hair salon here in Paphos in Cyprus was so jealous of her because of how loving David was towards her, and it gave a bit of an idea, a bit of a flavour for the court about what kind of relationship they were dealing with. It opens up, as you are acutely aware, a massive debate and a massive discussion now that when situations like this happen, always comes out to play. Do you think that this could lead to some kind of change in the law where euthanasia becomes legal? So during the currency of these proceedings, Parliament in Cyprus has started to talk about this as an issue. And I know in September they're going to start discuss, uh, discussing this more seriously about the legalization of euthanasia in Cyprus. Uh, whether it leads to anything or not, who knows? It's a serious discussion to be had, and there are good arguments on both sides of the debate. But I think the question I always ask myself is, what would I do if put in that position with somebody who I, who I was in love with and who was in a lot of pain? And I think I, I can't say that I would do anything differently uh, than David did. It's a bit grim, this, what I'm about to ask you, but all of it is, really, is the subject matter. A couple of points, which is that the prosecution raised the manner in which David decided to end Janice's life, which is down here as asphyxiation. They said that it was a horrible death and that it was no painless or peaceful end. As I understand it, David did then sadly make an attempt on his own life, is that correct? And then the police, I think, found him 
before that happened. I, I suppose the manner in which he acted was something that was up for question. What's his view on that? But in regards to the, the manner of, of, of her death, it was suffocation. She was in no position to be able to take pills to end her own life. And that's where you get one, one of the problems with this euthanasia debate. People say, well, well why, why can't people do it themselves? Because often when you're in pain, you're in a position, you can't actually end your own life. So, so that's why he acted as he did. Uh, and the, the case law, if you look across our jurisdiction, England and Wales, across uh, the, common, uh, the Commonwealth, when these cases happen, there are much more gruesome situations, if I can put it like that, of people causing the death of their loved ones. And they're put in this position because there's no formal process that people can go through to be helped to end their life by medical professionals. And not for one moment would I say that it wouldn't have been better mm. if she could have ended her own life in a proper way with the help of a doctor or a nurse. L Michael, thank you very much for coming on and it's been you know, a fascinating conversation and obviously I hope that David uh, continues to be okay upon his release. It's Michael Pollack there who is the Director of Justice Abroad and is David Hunter's lawyer.